And we are on. <laughs> Hi, Grace. How are you? How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you doing? Still alive, as I said before. Yeah. <laughs> so today with me is Grace Anderson. Grace, uh, she's a coach in Carson Grace in London. She's coaching the striking, uh, K1 and kickboxing, as well as women jiu-jitsu. And I thought it would be great to uh, have this conversation with you because you are the family in a male sport, in a very, very testosterone environment. Yeah. I don't think there is a more so male oriented Male dominated industry. D- dominated industry. Yeah. It's not necessarily a male sport. Let's, no, no, no. Let's get sorry. That right. I'm sorry. Yes, you're right. <laughs> it's male dominated industry. Yeah, and, yeah. But uh, you're a woman here and you do it great. Yeah. So, how did you start it? So, I started my martial arts journey when I was a teenager. Um, from a young age, my both my uncles were into martial arts. They were both black belts in karate, one of them black belt in kickboxing. And even though I didn't see them ever train or, or anything, my mum used to talk about it. And I was always quite intrigued about martial arts. So when I was a teenager, I started kickboxing. Uh, sorry, I started karate. And um, yeah, it was really good. It was a, a real good um, intro into martial arts. Um, it gave me the knowledge of striking, stand up, different kicks um, and discipline in martial arts, uh, mobility, flexibility. So it was, a, it was, it was great for me at the time. Um, I've always been involved in sports. I was a horse rider from a very young age, um, competed in show jumping and dressage for many years um, until it came to a point where I had to choose either horse riding or, or martial arts as a, as a career path. Um, and at the time I chose the horses. Um, so I came back into martial arts later on in my twenties. I felt like I was really missing something in my life and martial arts gives me something mentally and physically that no other sport ever has. Um, and I missed it. So I, when I got back into martial arts, decided that I wanted something a bit more full contact. So then went down the kickboxing route. I found a coach and within six months, I was, I did my first K1 fight. Six months yeah, since you started training. K1, you went yeah. sorry, for the competition. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of crazy. It was, crazy. It was, <laughs> it was I don't great. want to say it's short time. I was, but it was great and I loved it. Um, uh, and then... Can I, sorry, can I ask you about matchup in this uh, kind of fight? <laughs> Did they find another person similar? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My coach or? was really good. Like he, he looked after me, and and you know we were both debut in mm. in our kickboxing. She'd been training a lot longer than I had, um, but yeah, it was. It, she was from a really good gym. I'm, I'm asking because I saw in the box that uh, they tried to pr- always promote one of the fighters. So mm-hmm. they're looking for a couple of guys who just starting just to take beat up by some guy who, who need to have 10-0. No, the thing is, is no, or something like that. no, I mean, anyone that puts a fighter in that position, you that's know, right. hasn't got the right intentions for their fighters. I would, you know, I've seen it before on fight shows. It doesn't happen all the time, but I have seen it. And that's why I would look after my fighters. I would never put them out on something, like especially a debut. Exactly. You know, the guys, they, they, no matter how experienced they are or like how much training that they've done here, they don't have the experience of being in the cage or in a ring. And you need to kind of get that adrenaline out and and know what it feels like to get in there so matching a debut person up with someone that's had 10 fights there's no benefit to either of them no, so but, but what i'm most saying about the boxing that i saw that they was looking for uh opponents for someone they want to promote yeah the way that this person win mm-hmm. so i'm happy that didn't happen here that's oh no like that. no 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 and 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 i'm not as well, I'm not stupid. Like I, I, I know I, you're not. <laughs> I would do my own research on the person that I'm going to fight. Um, but it was a lot harder back then. You know, you're you're talking 11 years ago when I fought, and almost 12 years ago when I had my first fight, and there wasn't many girls, so it was harder to find matches. And and even when I did get matched up, you had pullouts and 
you know, injuries. I, I flew over to Malta to fight and, and someone had to pull out from an injury. So, I mean, it's, it was harder back then. There is more females in the sport now, which is great to see. Um, not only in kickboxing, Muay Thai, MMA, jiu-jitsu as well like across the board there is more females still not as many obviously as men but we we are getting matched up a lot lot numbers are much better now way better and so so i got into kickboxing and then after a couple of months of training my coach said do you want to do mma and i was like i haven't got a clue what mma is um and so we just started training like he explained everything to me i needed to work on ground game do some uh, brazilian jiu-jitsu i'd never even heard of it and how was going to absorbing the ground uh, game after being a typical striker it's not like coming into it it's not intuitive as at all. fresh, yeah. I think when you step off the street and you start martial arts and your first thing is Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, you know, you, you're you very open-minded. When you come from a striking background, it's very unnatural to be on your back. It's, you know, it's, we want to stay on our feet. That's where we naturally feel like our strongest or stay on top. So... It took me a long time to start develop, developing my um, my my bottom game. My top game was <laughs> was a lot better, a lot more polished. Um, but even when I started MMA, my first MMA fight was after about a year of training, or not even. I don't even think it was a year of training. How old have you been then? Huh? How old have you been? What, when I was first fight MMA. First fight MMA was well, I was twenty nine. That's late. La- late. That's yeah, late but fight. I came into it yeah, late. Yeah. You know, back when I was eighteen, it, you know, seventeen, eighteen, it wasn't, it wasn't ready available. You know, uh, especially around where I was. I'm just a couple of years older than you, and I have to tell that uh, in Poland, I'm, mm. I'm from Poland, I'm Polish. Uh, in uh, when I was starting martial arts, it was just kind of taekwondo by yeah uh, yeah yeah teachers who kind of kind of know taekwondo yeah 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 <laughs> and the only uh things we was really absorbing from the media it was m- movies with bruce lee there mm. was nothing else yeah and it was it was like you know you could always find a a karate taekwondo a few kickboxing gyms and i'm from so like i'm from sorry i'm not from london so it was there was even less available around there um so you know to find a gym to train and then to develop martial arts was was a bit trickier back then now then when so when i started there was a lot more gyms around there was um a lot more fight shows like you start to get opened up to the fight industry and it is there's a lot out there, but it's quite a small in small world, you know. Once you you once you know people, um, but yeah, it was. I started doing, you know, jujitsu for my MMA, but this it was very much. They said, you know, I I wanted to start fighting and I wanted to start competing quite soon, and um, and they were like, Grace, we're not going to teach you jujitsu in in the time frame that you need to do your first fight. So we're just, I almost, John, John used to laugh at me and say, you, you just knew anti jujitsu. So everything to stop someone doing jujitsu on me. So it was always take down defense. And so I, I don't, I don't think I really got into jujitsu until I came to Colson's about eight years ago when I met John. And then I got introduced to, to Colson Gracie London. And that's when really my jujitsu proper jujitsu journey started. I think everything before that was just anti jujitsu <laughs> training. Oh, that's a good strategy. Yeah. <laughs> if you cannot join them, at least stop them. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. And the thing is, is when I was fighting, um, it was more, you know, the matchups, whereas nowadays people that fight will have a have a background in striking and jujitsu and probably judo wrestling. Uh, Back then, you'd either be paired up with a striker or someone that does jujitsu. So it was very, you know, it was you weren't always paired up with someone that 
was good at everything, an all round fighter. So I found myself fighting a few, a lot of people from like Muay Thai gyms. So we would stay standing. And then I remember fighting a girl and she was from a Jiu Jitsu gym, but I kept it standing. So it's, it, you know, it was very different. The matchups then were very different to what they are now. At the moment, uh, we can see uh, that this industry is completely different than then. And now you've got MMA oriented gyms. Yeah. Where you, when, yeah, you, yeah. when it's just martial art calling MMA, they yeah. start to call it. They cover way. everything. You know, look at, look at here, Carl's. like Carl's. Carlson's. We, Carlson's amazing. We <laughs> have, you know, we have judo, we have wrestling, jiu jitsu, K1, and MMA classes. You know, we've got everything under one roof. Um, you don't always get that in a gym. So it, we are really lucky and all the instructors are incredible, That's you know. Great level of instructions here. Amazing level of instruction. Like, you know, and not just, it is a jujitsu gym. We are a jujitsu gym. But the fact yes. is we've got an insane wrestling coach. Eric is an insane wrestling yes. coach. Glenn, Glenn is probably... You know, he is judo. You know, <laughs> everything he, about him is Glenn about is, judo. If I could remember, he's six down judo. Yeah, from Budokai. exactly. He, there is nothing that guy does not know about judo. And then, you know, you've got Thomas, who's an amazing MMA coach. So, with everyone's experience here, it's we have great base to start. From we MMA. have a <laughs> phenomenal base. You know, you you can learn anything here. For, for for an MMA fight or, or individual, any you know, individual sport you want to do, it. yeah, yeah. So how how did looks your transition from uh, fighter mm -hmm. K one MMA fighter into become a coach? So I started coaching um, sort of in my early thirties. I'd already had a lot of experience in martial arts through younger years and then coming through into K1. Um, and then I started working for the gym that I was fighting out of um, and then just transitioned into coaching there, really. I've all, I mean, I've always taught. I, I, I was an instructor in horse riding and, and so for me, coaching is a very natural thing. I see things and... I feel like I'm I'm good with people. Like I can read people quite well. I I have an understanding of how they learn. Like not everyone learns the same, you know, and even though we're teaching the same thing, everyone is different in the way that they will understand it and take it on board. So everyone absorbs the knowledge differently. Yeah. Way. It's like learning at school. Not everyone yeah. is going to learn the same, you know. So why would that be dif any different to teaching a martial art? You know, you, you have to be able to see how people pick up on things. Is it visually? Is it verbally? You know, so I, I love the challenges that come with coaching. Hmm. And now we're going to the uh, things I want to touch it. How it is, uh, what is the difference between teach man, Emily, and teach woman? Is it the same way or you have to change something to make the women more interesting in martial arts? No, I don't think it's a case of that. I think anyone that steps through that door has an interest in learning a martial art. So whether it's a, ma a male or a female, it, I, that that is no different. I think it's it's nice when... Some sometimes it will be nicer for a, a female to come in and see a female coach, you know, as well as male coaches. It's there's not many female martial arts coaches. There's not as many anyway. So and especially striking coaches, it's it's not as common. So I think that's why I've managed to get more people involved in the K1 especially more females involved in the K1 um, I think it's just built, building a team if a safe environment building an, a good team a solid team that can train well together and can learn and develop their skills um, and I think sometimes that comes with its challenges yes being a female coach in a 
male dominated industry does come with its challenges or did come with its challenges you know you do have to prove yourself I did have to prove myself a lot when I was uh when I was starting out you're not as as readily accepted like a male coach um however I've been in this for so long that I believe in my coaching ability. I believe in that that I do a good job and that I and I am you a coach that cares. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I do it cuz I love it. I'm very passionate about about martial arts, about kickboxing, about the jiu-jitsu. It's, you know, it's part of my life. My son's train, my partner trains, like it is part of our life. And I think that comes over that's that that really does come over when I teach that I do care I care about the fighters and I I care about whether you're just coming in to do it to keep fit or you want to compete one day you're all treated the same but I'll always have time for each of you individually if you need it Hmm. because uh, I was imagined that uh and also, to be honest, it's my imagination is not a uh, scientific uh, mm-hmm. survey. There is a percentage of uh, girls, women, who join martial arts uh, mm-hmm. clubs because they feel that they will need the skills to protect themselves, to be they scared of men or they want to yeah. uh, put their confidence to that next mm-hmm. level. Yeah. And I thought that they can be scared of them environment here because they don't know it yeah. not because it's wrong the environment is great it's yeah. so friendly that the people don't imagine mm-hmm. but if you never uh, touch this uh, the kind of environment you've never been here mm. you can imagine that you're going to the place when everyone want to kill you everyone is rude everyone uh, mm. want to hurt you and mm. which is completely nonsense mm. but that's how the movies show this kind of place yeah, <laughs> yeah yeah and when, as a woman, you're coming here first time, mm-hmm. you, d- you are in a little bit stressed because you don't know this uh, this place, you don't know this in, mm. this uh, set- settlement. And then you come in here and you see a family coach mm. who is respected by the guys in the gym. Mm-hmm. Be- huge guys, we have mm. a couple of very big guys. I think that's, can, that's really help uh, make the decision to join. Yeah. To it, try. I think it helps and I think all the coaches give something unique. That's that's why we have such a good coaching team. Um, and listen, even if women come in and they meet me and they're like, great, I'll always push them to go into the mixed classes because it's important for them to train with, with other people, like male, female. It's not like... I'm the female coach and I'm going to keep all the women separate. That's not the idea. The idea of people stepping through the door for a martial arts gym is they want to train martial arts, whether that be for self-defense reasons. You know, I've had a couple of girls come in. One was held at knife point. She wanted to come in because she just wanted to have a bit of confidence and not that panic and that fear, you know, Another woman had someone climb through a window in the middle of the night and try and break in. You know, it's some women will do it because they just want that, you know, they want to feel comfortable in an uncomfortable situation, which is what martial arts is. Basically, that's That's exactly what it is. That's what you're doing. But then you'll have other people that will come. It's not all about, oh, poor woman, self-defense. It's not about that. Some people just want to come because they want to learn how to fight and they want to you know they want to come and train hard i think people need to realize that carlson's as carlson gracie as a style is it is quite aggressive it's you know it's it is a very (laughs) we are are very friendly we are good with hearts (laughs) we're very nice people but we're it's quite an aggressive quite an aggressive style which suits a lot of people i don't i think this is where people are getting it wrong like oh you know we need no People are going to stay and they'll stay forever because they love the style. Now, you're going to get men and women through that door that don't like the style. They'll change the and place. And they'll go somewhere else. And that is fine. And you'll have other people will go to other gyms and not like it and come here and love it. And I think we all just need to stay true to our 
ourselves and and our the style that it is and what we stand for and what we represent as a team because we just grow we're growing and growing and growing all the time and we have a solid team you know and more women are joining all the time I had you know and that's amazing to see um, more females coming through the door but not just that more guys coming through the door so what are you doing to convince uh, women that they should go to the mixed class well every time every time someone a woman joins and if they come to my women's class i just help them like i i, I watch them see their abilities and then i suggest what classes they should go to like you know we've got The beginners classes during the day with John, we've got the evening classes, beginners classes with Wilson, Simon and Dickie. And it's just more about pushing them into the right direction. However, we have the normal there, we have the intermediate classes that we have all levels going to. So I think it's more about the coaches are so good. They'll look after new people. They want to integrate people. They want to grow the team. So It's just more about getting, uh, giving them the confidence to go and try other, the other classes, which, you know, it's happened in Sheen. All the girls go to the mixed classes. They feel more than happy. They come to my class still, but, but that's just because they enjoy training with me. They can ask questions if they need to. They've had any issues in the week or it's not, you know, yes, it is. It is a tough sport. I, uh, if that would be not, that would be not martial arts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's not the Disneyland. <laughs> We don't... Women aren't this fragile being that need, that's made of glass. We, we join here because we want to train and we want to be treated... Equally. Equally. Well, equally, yeah. And we totally understand. Not, you know... I don't want to get smashed by a 120 kilo guy. Yeah, big, 125, yeah. <laughs> big John. <laughs> But I can equally get crushed by someone that's my size. And I get that, you know, and that's what I enjoy about martial arts is, and I can get crushed by Monica. And she's like 20 kilos lighter than me. <laughs> well, Monica is amazing. She's blue belt, but she's very, very strong. Yeah, but... And She can. I, I spar with her once, and it wasn't even like hundred uh, percent sparring. But it, it was during the seminar with uh, Carson yeah, uh, yeah. Junior. After the seminar, we just had yeah. five minutes of fun. Yeah, and I was really surprised. She how man, she can, pound for pound, she's like yeah. the strongest person in the gym. How she can generate yeah, so yeah. much power in such a small frame. <laughs> yeah. But this is what I mean. Like you've got such a mix of people here, and and. They're tough. Like, and that's what you want. You know, people that want to do MMA or transition to MMA or compete. And, you know, we've got some of the guys competing in the world. And like, it's, we have a good solid team, competitive team here as well. And everyone helps everyone out. That's how it's supposed to be in exactly. a gym like that. Exactly. So what is harder for you? Uh, K1, kickboxing, or MMA, or jiu-jitsu? Yes. What, competing? <laughs> competing and train. Training, MMA. Because there's so many um, parts to it, parts to your training. So you have to fit in everything um, and mold it together. So it's a lot, and it's very intense training. But competing, when you're actually in there, K1. It's fast, it's explosive, and it's just non-stop. There's no, there's no rest, there's no get up, there's no, okay, we'll clinch for a bit. You know, it's, it's, it's full on. It's only three minute rounds, three three minute rounds, but it's intense. I remember the cardio you, I used to have to have for kickboxing for K1 was just insane i mean same as like mma you know i i could have an mma fight that would stay standing for all the rounds so it would be just the same but you know at least you'd be able to have, have a bit options. of clinch <laughs> you get your breath back for a second but i think all of them you know 
jiu jitsu is very different because you might have three or four or five fights in a day so you know i was disappointed because it looks that jiu jitsu is the easier <laughs> yeah but i mean jiu jitsu is very different i think it's when I, i remember when i went to my first jiu jitsu competition as a white belt and i was like john so who do i fight and he was like i don't know you just turn up at the mat and i was like this is a bit strange like because obviously with I don't only ever fought on fight shows, so I knew who I was fighting weeks in advance. There was this mm. run up to it. It was, you know, it's a lot goes on before the fight shows. Whereas you just, you just rock up. Whoever is there, whoever you next to you on the mat, you just go fight them. As There's long as you're winning, person. you're fighting. <laughs> yeah, you're going to fight again. And and I was like, this is so friendly. This is just such a nice atmosphere. And it's except a, when they try to break your hands. <laughs> well, yeah, but it's. It was just a lot nicer way to fight. I mean, it's longer. It's like the days are quite long and stuff. But it's, you know, you're fighting in the day. I mean, I remember fighting on a fight show. And I was, you know, second to last fight. And I fought at 10 to midnight. I've never trained that late at night. But yeah, I'm meant to compete at that time of night. I mean, it's... So, it's... That's quite hard to do. Whereas, you know, jujitsu, you know, training in the day, fighting in the day, when you do your classes, you know, your body's regulated to that. So I, I actually really, at the moment, I'm really enjoying competing in jujitsu. Because of the movie I did in the past, I was uh, with a couple of coaches, uh, MMA coaches, uh, yeah. which I was preparing their uh, fighters to fight. What they did, because the fighting, normally mm. the shows are on evening. Last two months, yeah, they move almost all their uh, training activity to the evenings. Yeah, the yeah. late evenings, just to, uh, to make body, the body used to. Yeah, absolutely. Because if you're not used to training, like the lads, two of the lads um, fought on an MMA show. Um, uh, the one that I went to a few a couple of months ago, and they fought at the time that our classes were on, and I was like, this is perfect. You're fighting at the time when you normally train every week. So it was great. I was like, any later, then <laughs> you're getting past what your body's used to. And it was. It was just like, you know, normal day for them. So what is for you more stressful uh, when you're coaching and going to the, to the cage yeah. with your fighters or to the ring when it's the K1? Yeah. Or when a uh, time when he was an uh, active fighter? I think it's different. Like, obviously, you know, everyone has nerves when they fight, when they compete. Um, I'm definitely in a different place now than I was back then in, with training and fighting and competing. Um, but once you're in there as a fighter, once, once you've done all the training the fun bit is getting in there. Like you've done all the hard work, all the strenuous training, all the sleepless nights, all the weight cut, everything is done. And so when that door locks, you're like, oh, it's almost like oh, I get to just have some fun now. That's it. Whereas when you're coaching someone, I definitely feel a bit more nervous because I know what they're about to go through. I know the feelings that they've got, you know, the nerves before the fight, going in there, the adrenaline, you know, I know what can happen, what can go wrong, like having an adrenaline dump or gassing, you know, all these things that can happen, you don't want them to happen for your fighters. So you're like almost a bit nervous for them because everything's been taken out of your control and you don't know how they're actually feeling at the time or when they're in there you know how you feel but you're just hoping that they're staying a certain way like calm and collected so it is it is hard being a coach in in that respect because you want it so badly for them but you know that it doesn't matter no matter what they do getting in there is the hardest bit and the fact that they've done that is is incredible the fighters hear uh, during the fight when the coach shouting to them, do this or... It, it depends on the person. The only person that I can ever hear when I'm competing is John. Okay. He's the only person I can hear. And it, funny enough, it was the same through pregnancy, like through through um, delivering the baby. I had like, when I had my first child, the, 
I had about four or five doctors in there and he was the only person I could hear. And even now, jujitsu, there could be a hundred people screaming in there and he's the only voice that I can hear. That's a very strong connection. Yeah. But it's, I think it's just you tune into who you want to tune into. And that is, is important. You have to trust the person that you're listening to. So some people, you know, they'll just kind of go tunnel vision and they'll, they'll, they'll just get on with it. But, you know, a fighter that can really tune into their, to their coaches, they'll, they'll do really well. So what, is a difference between this what we see in the movies when mm -hmm. the coach shouting don't give up keep going yeah. Be and what really coach uh, saying to the fighter <laughs> like are it you are you telling the, the fighter like uh, instruction keep your guards up yeah of course like you're te you're 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 telling them you know you're giving them pointers as you would normally you know you're you're seeing things that they don't necessarily feel or or see um you know if they're dropping their hands or if they're if they're slowing down or if you see that they're you know getting a bit gassed or fatigued you have to give that them that push they need to hear it because sometimes when your mind kicks in you need someone just to click you out of it and be like come on you got this let's go because it is hard If it, if it was easy, everyone would do it, you know, and it, and it isn't that easy getting in there and like, I think, I think it was, you know, Muhammad Ali said, or I can't remember, they said, everyone's got a plan until you get punched in the face. Uh, was, uh, Mike, Tyson. Mike Tyson, sorry, Mike Tyson said, um, you know, everyone's got a plan until you get punched in the face. So, and it's so true. Like, It's it's all good and well until someone's actually trying to rain down on you, and then you're like, oh, so that's strange. It's feeling. more <laughs> co it's more the coaching to make sure your fighter knows. Okay, it's your fight. It's your game plan. Let's go. Let's go to work. So, uh, yeah, it is a bit to do with the whole geeing them up and making them feel like they're unstoppable but at the same time giving them the pointers that they need very specific pointers that they need not firing too much at them so i remember first time when i was hit to the face uh, during your class <laughs> and it changed perspective because yeah. I, imagination that okay i would take something to the guard and i would yeah. just go to uh, after this person it doesn't work that way mm. First, especially when you've never been uh, really hit to the yeah. face and you just have this, your head bounced to the back yeah. because it's nice, clean. Yeah. And that's, and listen, my classes are super chilled. Like we, we don't, we don't do crazy spot, hard sparring. Only if people are going to fight, like everyone's really respectful, but sometimes you do just get that clean shot. It like was someone clean. will walk into a shot or it'll be a clean shot. I saw someone get, get I've been kicked the other day and I was like, oh, and even they were like, Yeah, walked into that one. During the, your classes, uh, especially Wednesday mornings, when which one yeah. I was able to join, uh, I've been uh, clean, uh, I had clean shots twice. Yeah. One to the face and one straight to away. Yeah. And that one is the, uh, yeah, the harder one. Yeah, that one. It's the only time I've ever my been breath. taken out of a fight. <laughs> only like, time is when I've been need. I was need and I've been winded is by far the worst pain in the world. I had an axe kick to my face and I fractured my cheekbone and that was less painful than having the wind knocked out of me. And by the way, it wasn't strong heat. No. It, it, I, it was just It was just clean. There. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's, it cut me. Yeah. It was over. Yeah. But being <laughs> winded is just the worst. Body shots are just the worst. So how it is when you're going first time to the room Uh, all guys there, mm -hmm. the doors open, woman is coming and try to coach them. First time, did you have something like that? I think more so when, sorry, more so when I started at Carlson's because I would, I mean, I've, I'd already been coaching for many years anyway before I came to Carlson's and, you know, the co the striking coach was leaving, had left and, and, And I just needed a space to coach some of my clients. And, and I approached Dickie and he said, look, we, we haven't got anyone. Do you want to start it up? And 
and I did and I was really grateful and but I knew I'd already done the whole transition into coaching anyway so I I knew the things that were going to come up with people walking in and seeing a female coach you know what what am I going to learn here and what I knew I I was going to have those those issues but I also knew that there was a really good team here so I think some of them were going to obviously give me the benefit of the doubt as well and not I think it's we have to make it clear it's not always just about me being a female it's just a generally a different coach you know some people are very true to who they train with they might not like the next person coaching whether that's a male or a female you know I think some people just like training with certain people I'm just lucky enough that I've been able to get a really solid group of people together to train and and feel like they must like the style of how I how, how I teach because it's grown rapidly and and it's a real solid team now. No, I uh, definitely did enjoy your uh, classes. That's yeah, why I, uh, when we had the Wednesdays, I've been there. I know that the class it was more spiring orientated. Yeah, but I did need a couple of pointers. Well, because yeah, I was completely green. <laughs> But still I think, am. listen, I still get, you'll still get people walk in the class and you see the reaction of, you can see in their face, they're like, oh, I wasn't expecting that. But as well, I get, I get people that start and they don't bat an eyelid at the fact that I'm a female coach. I don't think that nowadays they see so many female fighters as well, you know. On Some of them are technically amazing. Amazing, you know, whether they watch, you know, UFC or one or, you know, whatever, they they see female coaches. They see now, thanks to social media, you see a lot of pad, like like strong pad women holders and, and athletes across the board. So... I don't think it's so much an issue now. I I'm comfortable with who I am and how I coach. So I never see a problem. If someone comes and they don't enjoy the class and they leave, then that, that, yeah, that's it. no skin <laughs> off my nose. You know, I'm the fact that I have, you know, a, a good K1 team and they're all friends and they all get on really well and I have a great environment. I don't have any crazy people in there, you know, trying to hurt anyone. That's all I ever wanted. One of the things I notice is that some guys are the, the John Carson just for K1. Yeah. But they still uh, treat Carson as a Carson uh, members like yeah. any other uh, guys. So they are in very good ways, friendly with uh, jiu-jitsu guys. Yeah, absolutely. Because some guys are ju- uh, just... And the thing is, is even how, I, even how I teach, I'm always talking about jiu-jitsu or judo or the wrestling or MMA. So it's like, you know, I know that some of the guys that come to my K1 are fighting in MMA. So even how I explain some of the techniques, I'll break it down of this is how you would use it in the setup for MMA this is how you use it for K1 this so and it's it, similar to okay here's the technique in gi but you can also use it in no gi so it's the same so you're trying to transition these guys that are stand up fighters into uh, into MMA or into some sort of grappling because I do think it's really important to cover more than one martial arts I think it's really important for people like and it's it's great if you can do it and you have the time to do it to do more classes then definitely you do it you know and start sooner rather than later because I wish that I had had more interaction with jiu-jitsu when I first started I remember my first class uh, jiu-jitsu in Carson yeah I come here as a black belt in Aikido yeah and so my first thought was, okay, I'll show these fuckers how, how it's done. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, my ego was, was very high because yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. I did feel strong. Yeah, yeah. And my first sparring I had with Dickie Martin, my first sparring <laughs> ever. <laughs> and Dickie was already world champion 
in masters. He just cleaned the floor with me. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I stand, uh, I, st I went back home, I see it. I, I opened the can of beer because yeah, I had to do something strong. And I was, I was thinking, I have just two ways to deal with that. Yeah. Uh, first way is forget about this place. It never yeah, happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going back to <laughs> the place I used to be. I'm black belt. Everyone yeah, yeah. respect me. Or... I'm keeping the white belt and staying with Carson and yeah. to learn fights. Yeah. I'm still here after yeah, 10 yeah. years. <laughs> yeah. I think it was a great decision. Yeah, of course. I enjoy every single time they beat my ass. Yeah. And they do it very, very friendly way. <laughs> yeah. And the thing is, is I, I think martial arts from any age, it, like, you know, you always hear people go, oh, I'm too old to... So, no, no one. No you're not too old, you're not too past it, you're not too busy. Like, if you want to do it, then just do it. Because you can make the time to, you know, do other things, make the time to just start something that is a bit out of your comfort zone. Because you won't regret it. Like, any, and there's, it's not just k1 or just you did anything you've got judo you've got wrestling you've got all of these all practical martial all arts. practical martial arts and it, it's it's something that you're once you're in it you'll go why didn't i start this sooner oh, I but know. i mean even my kids you know i was i didn't want to get them involved in it too soon but obviously this is like a second home to me and John. So it, it was tough to keep them away from it. Cause they're Impossible. They it's, you know, they're always here. And it was, we, we didn't push them. We didn't say like, you know, we, we said to him, you can't start until you're four. And he'd, well, when can I go? When doesn't can work I go? that way. But I mean, he's been doing jujitsu at home since he was born. So like John's always been playing with him, doing, doing wrestling and all the rest of it. So I knew that they were going to do it. And then having a second boy, it was like, okay, this is inevitable. How, and now they love it. How K1 influence your jury? So do you, is there any, do you feel that some stuff uh, you can help with your jury? Oh yeah. Yeah. I've got a really, sh I, I, I feel like I'm, I have a strong base. Um, I have a strong stand up because I'm, I'm harder to take down. I feel just purely because of my footwork from kickboxing. That's, that's all stemmed from that. The, I feel very stable on my feet. Um, and, and my top game, but that's purely from being in a stand up and everything, all my MMA, my early days MMA was to get back to my feet. So I spent, little to no time on my back and even if I was it was how the hell do I get back to my feet so I think to begin with a lot of my jiu-jitsu was you know top game pressure and 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 then I tore my shoulder and um I I wanted to continue training so I had to then focus on my bottom game because I couldn't afford to get swept and land on my shoulder I think that really helped it, it massively because I, I had to do it. If I wanted to train that, so I had to do. And it kind of forced me into it in a way. And, and I'm, I actually, I, you have to look at every, every bad event with a, with a bit of a silver lining. And that was it. It was, you know, it's taught me to, it's, it's made me step back and go, okay, now I have to work on something that I don't feel that confident in or am that comfortable in. And it, it really helped. But now it's still the same. Like, you know, I think I'll always be more of a top, uh, you know, top pressure passer rather than, you know, poor guards. <laughs> One day, maybe I'll surprise someone and myself. <laughs> but, you know, I think, and that stems a lot from, I like, I want to be on my feet because... I'm a striker. I think that's why I would be interested to see if I if I ever did a, another MMA fight. I'd be interested to see what I would revert back to. Would I stay try and stay standing, or would I would I go to you know 
play more of my jiu-jitsu game or, or would I just stay in my striking game? Like, uh, I think the Malibu will depend from uh, the person who you will fight with. Yeah, of course. But I just, it would, it would, it's what, what would I go to naturally? And that, because I've spent predominantly the last eight years have been just jujitsu. I've not done as much striking, you know, teaching and coaching and yeah, but actual training it's predominantly been jujitsu for the last eight years so it's there is a shift there there is a shift and and i feel strong and confident more so in my jujitsu but not as confident as i do with my stand-up because that just becomes that feels just very natural to me i've really had to fight to love jujitsu i had a bit of a bumpy start to it and then when i joined carlson's I found a, you know, I I didn't accept it straight away. And then after time, I kind of, I just pushed through it. And then in the last sort of two years, there was a massive shift. John and I were talking about it. And I actually really love it. And I think for the first time ever, I started to love it more than stand up. And which I found really... Do you, do you know we record that? I know. <laughs> It'll be used against you. Crazy, those words. But even I was talking to him and I was like, I can't believe it. I can't believe that I'm actually saying this. But I think... I, and I think it's just... I think when I got my purple belt as well, it was a huge shift. And the way I felt about it and the way I started to train and see things and, and then starting to coach jujitsu as well. Like... I, it felt very different to me. And then I competed in it and I competed at Purple Belt and just loved it, just loved it. And I was like, oh my God, this is the first time I'm really feeling like this. Something people don't realize uh, who never did jiu-jitsu, mm. that the belts in jiu-jitsu, color belts, yeah. uh, they are not the same like color belts in uh, oh, most no. of the no, martial no. arts. No. Purple belt in uh, jiu-jitsu is very high belt. Yeah, I think, and as well, like I never, I'm not chasing the belt. It's not, it's no, not, no, 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 just, no, no, I know, I know. But I think, of the, uh, I think as well, I, I look at it as different parts of my journey. And I just felt a real, I mean, everyone says it's a real struggle through blue belt anyway, but I just, I think that, that transition as well from, being annoyed that I wasn't doing in as much kickboxing. And then I was like, oh, I felt like this jujitsu was taking over. And it was like a real kind of fight between the two. And then I just realized that actually I really, really enjoy doing jujitsu. And I love the fact that they're, they're very different, but I can bring the two together as well. It's fun. Oh, yes, it is. Definitely. Yeah. So who is your favorite fighter? As a family and Millie. So, and why? <laughs> so my my all-time favorite female fighter is Chris Cyborg. Super aggressive. Like, all her, funs, all her fights are super fun. You know, she is just, she goes in there and she gets the job done. That's my kind of style fighter. That's who I always try to be. When I fought, I was a forward fighter. I went in there to get the job done. Um, so uh, someone that I really looked up to. And and I actually got to see her fight in Vegas uh, on Invicta. And it was incredible. I mean, she finished her in, within the first 30 seconds. So <laughs> you don't get to see her for long. <laughs> I have to say, I would be disappointed because <laughs> you paid for a ticket, flies everything. Yeah. And then... Even don't don't finish your no, drink. No, I know, I know. But you know what? And I, so my all-time uh, favorite male fighter is a K1 fighter called Tyrone Spong, who's also fought in boxing and MMA. Um, and I actually got to meet him the same weekend that I was out there. So it was like I'd never met and never seen either of them. Got to see both of them the same weekend. I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. So it was it was really, really good. But he's an incredible fighter. Like knockout power is insane. He's had so many fights and and he's super technical, calm, but the power that man has is in, is insane. So for me, it's slightly different because 
as like as much as I like uh, for the feminist uh, feminist uh, fighters c- cyborg, my favorite one is Joanna Jacek. Yeah. The Polish fighter. Yeah, yeah. She was long time champion in UFC. Yeah, yeah. When she was in her prime, she was dominating. Yeah. And what I found it was that it was so hard for other girls to put her down. Yeah. It was practically impossible. Yeah. Her wrestling and uh, stop of takedowns was mm-hmm. amazing. Yeah. Her striking was different level. Yeah. When she was in her prime, of course. Yeah. <laughs> but from the melee fighters, uh, Fedor Emonienko. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ten years uh, unbeatable in yeah. heavyweight. Yeah, she's incredible. And his face, he had always the same face. Whatever he's doing, <laughs> yeah. it was like zero feelings yeah. on his face. He can yeah, yeah. cut the bread or kill someone. Yeah. His face looks <laughs> exactly the same. same. <laughs> but, they're, but they're incredible fighters. I mean, both of them. Of them. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. preference who, who you like style more. Exactly, and exactly. And like jiu-jitsu, I mean... Leandro Lowe. Oh, yes. Absolutely. He was amazing. Incredible. You know, I watched Cop- Tragic, I've amazing. watched the documentary Copper Bodo about a million times. And it's just what that guy achieved in, in, his, in his lifetime was incredible, you know. And it was a tragedy what happened to him. But he's, he's a legend and he will, his jiu jitsu yeah. will carry on forever, you know. The, the case in court is still going, isn't it? Hmm? The case in court... Uh, oh, is it? The, I don't know. Yeah. It, so. was, it was very sad and... Uh, very sad. Very unfortunate what's happened. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, how is your guys going? How are they doing in the MMA? Amazing. I mean, Thomas has done such a good job with the MMA guys. Um, I mean, I cover their jiu-jitsu. Um, uh, sorry, sorry, I cover sorry. their striking and uh, they get all their Even jiu-jitsu here. here. I know. <laughs> See, that's what I mean, what's happened to me? Oh my God, I need to get out of this gym. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I cover their kickboxing and, and Thomas does their MMA and wrestling and, you know, the they get their jiu-jitsu here. But they're amazing. I mean, the fact that they've gone in there, we've had what... First, first comp, we had Joe, Joseph and Alex all did amazing, like striking masterclasses. They were, they were amazing. And then... It's uh, nice feelings to see that. So, like, for me, I was like, this, that's all I asked for is that <laughs> just get the hands up. Um, but yeah, they were, they were brilliant. They're striking their movement. They were slick. They, they did what they needed to do, which was amazing. And then... Um, Joseph and Omar have just been out on another fight show. Unfortunately, I couldn't get to it, but incredible. Both wins, like incredible fights, dominated with their jiu-jitsu as well, which was, and use their striking for their, for their openings to take down and then just executed everything precisely. And how is with K1? Saf is uh, competing or not? No, I haven't got anyone competing in K1 at the moment. Because I remember that, uh, like, a year ago, there was a couple of guys who won. Who went yeah, we had, um, we did some interclubs. Interclubs. Yeah, so we did, we went out, um, had a few, few of the people um, on interclubs. And we're going to do that this year as well. Mm. I think a few of them are quite keen to do some interclubs. I mean, I definitely think that um, some of the guys will be competing after summer in MMA. I'm going to try and get a few of the guys together to do maybe some K- a K1 fight and a couple of the girls. We've got some girls that are keen. You know, Karina's going to be competing. I think she's doing a fight in August. MMA or? Uh, I think she's doing a Muay Thai fight. Muay Thai. She's, uh, her background is Muay Thai. Yeah, Muay Thai. So she's going to be competing, I think, in August. Um, I'm very keen to get tanya in there still working on that one um she's lethal she, she'll hear that she's a weapon so i need to uh i need to get her on a show for sure but we'll just slowly slowly edge in that one <laughs> um nice. but you know i never push it F- competing has to be a personal thing and you know if you just enjoy the training great when it's your time when you're ready then you're ready you will know. <laughs> yeah, you will know. You will know. It was always bred into me, so I always want to compete, you Perfect. know, so that's it. 
So should we wrap up for today? Yeah, and, uh, it's been and fun. We definitely have to repeat it in the next couple of months. Yeah, no, this is really good. And well, by then, hopefully, a few of the lads would have been competing. Maybe we can drag yeah. them in here yeah. to have a chat yes. about their fights. That will be interesting, and it'll be interesting to see, you know, their point of view on on coaches as well. You know, having a female coach, it's always good to hear that side of it. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining me. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks Cheers. for having me. Us, uh, See ya, guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs>